so let's try to figure out what these antiderivatives are. So what is an antiderivative? If I have a function and I take its derivative, remember I said this section you're not going to like because they don't put a prime there, okay? But that's what that means. If I take the derivative of this function, I get this little f of x, where the original function is finding the antiderivative. So in other words, you know the rate, the derivative, we want to work backwards and find the original function. So I'm going to tell you, starting out, that x squared is an antiderivative of 2x. But the key here, there's other functions that have the same derivative, okay, that if I take the derivative, I get 2x, because what about these? So in other words, if I take the derivative of x squared plus 5, I get 2x. If I take the derivative of x squared minus 17, I get 2x because the constants go away. So what we like to do is we like to say that there's a family of these antiderivatives for any constant, and we just put plus c because we don't know what that constant is. You're going to see there's ways to find the constant. And if you remember from translations of functions, that's just moving the function up and down, right? Like x squared minus 3 moves x squared down 3. x squared plus 1 moves x squared up 1. All right, let's see if we can figure out a pattern. So an antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. I could check this by taking this derivative. So if I take the derivative, bring the 2 down, subtract 1, the 2's cancel, and I get x. So in other words, when I take the derivative of this, okay, so this function right here, I actually get x back. An antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3 because if I take the derivative of x, I think I said squared, x cubed over 3, I get x squared back. Okay, so you should be following these because we've been taking derivatives, so that part's not not so bad, it's just trying to figure out how to work back the other way. So if I have an antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over four, because if I take the derivative, I get x cubed. So can you see a pattern here? All right, so looking at x, x squared, x to the third, x becomes x squared over two, x squared becomes x cubed over three. So see what's happening here, is when we find the antiderivative, okay, that's what this column is here. When we find the antiderivative, we work backwards. Think about when you took the derivative, you brought the power down and subtracted one. Well, now we're going to divide that power, or let's say first, we're going to add one. We're doing the opposite. And then whatever we do up here, we're going to divide by that value. Again, plus C because we could have constants. So these I have on the slides, but you just learning, you should write that formula down. So if I want to find this antiderivative, the formula said I take the power and add one, and then I do the same thing on the bottom, and then plus C. Okay, so until you get comfortable with that formula, I certainly would work these by writing them out like that. And then you'll see you get x to the 6 over 6. So 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1. And then don't forget your plus c for the constant. If I want to find this antiderivative, we do t. Let's see, let me write this one out. Again, being new to you, we're going to do t to the 8 plus 1 over 8. Hello, what happened? I lost my pencil. 8 plus 1, and then, of course, plus C. So as you can see, you're going to get T to the 9th over 9 plus C. All right, so that's the backwards power rule, right? Is instead of subtracting 1 and bringing it down, I'm act or bringing it down and subtracting 1, I'm adding 1 and dividing out that value. If I have a constant, I can just throw the constant out front. So notice um, the antiderivative of 3dx is 3x because the derivative of 3x is, is 3. So be sure you're getting how we're reading this. This is the original function, 3x. 
This is, we took the derivative of the original function. The problem is, is we didn't know the original function. So in this case, I could even write, because of not knowing, well, there's just a number there, couldn't I write 3x to the 0 in any, anything to the 0 power 1? So then by my rule, I would take and add 1 over add 1, and I would get 3x to the first power over 1, or just simply my 3x. So this is kind of like when we're taking derivatives. Um, we didn't really do all of this. Okay, to the zero power, we just recognize that you would simply add the variable. So find the antiderivative of 12 dx would be 12x plus c. All right. Um, different properties. This is the same thing that you did with derivatives where you can split up functions. Most students don't. They just work left to right, but you could. So in other words, if I had something that looked like this, um, if I wanted to split this, I could, I could write this as the anti, find the antiderivative of 3x dx plus find the antiderivative of x squared dx. We said that you take the power, which would be 1, and add 1, so 1 plus 1. You take the power and add 1, and then the same thing in the denominator. And then, of course, the plus C. All right, so finishing this off, that's how I'm getting 3x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 by using that power rule. All right, if I have something like this, I can just work left to right and say, okay, that would be q to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1, q to the 4th over 4, minus 6 q to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1, 6 to the q to the 3rd over 3. And then here all I did was just simply simplify my fraction. Antiderivatives for ln and e. Remember you're working backwards. So let's, let's say this backwards. If I took the derivative of ln of x, remember that was 1 over x? So the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. E to the x is lovely because it's just the same. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. This is that e to the kt. If you remember, when you take the derivative, you bring the k down. So notice that would cancel out. And so that's why you're having to divide it. So if I have something that looks like this, then I notice that my, and again, I could separate these and look at each piece at a time, plus my antiderivative of 1 over x dx. Put that nice little reminder up there in case you forget. So I do 8x to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln, and you should absolute value it, okay, in case you get a negative value. So this is 8x to the 4th over 4 plus ln of x plus c. And now from here, I can just simply simplify my fraction, and that's how I'm getting 2x to the 4th plus ln absolute value of x plus c. All right, same thing here. We said that if I'm doing the opposite, I'm doing 1 over that k. So I just brought the 12 out front, 1 over the k, 0 0.2. And notice, just like when you take derivatives, this piece just stays the same, so e to the 0.2t. And then I simply said 12 over 0 0.2, and I got that answer. Same thing with trig functions. These students get mixed up because they're opposite. The antiderivative of cosine is sine why the derivative of sine is cosine. However, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Why? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So I need a negative and a negative to get back my positive. This is if you have a value in, inside your argument here, inside your parentheses, you simply divide that out because that's the chain rule backwards. The chain rule, you took the derivative of that. Well, backwards, I divide it out. 
and then the same thing over here. So if I have my antiderivative of sine of x plus 3 cosine of 5x dx, the antiderivative of sine of x, I'm just looking straight up here, negative cosine of x, why you need that formula sheet. And then notice here, I throw the 3 out front, the cosine of 5x, that's this right here. So it would be 1 over 5 sine of 5x, and then I just put the 3 on top. If I'm looking at my e, so my antiderivative of e to whatever, I would simply take this and let's write it out here. And so, and this is where you kind of like, you can bring constants out front. So that's the same thing as saying that. Notice there's really no number up there except one. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. The good student, as you're learning these, you know what they're doing? They're checking it. What do I mean by that? Take the derivative of this. The derivative of 4e to the x is 4e to the x. The derivative of any constant is 0. And you should get that back. If you don't, okay, then you're not doing something right. All right, now notice here it says find an antiderivative. So that's what I did. But then it says for f of 0 equals 0. The heck does that mean? Well, remember that when you're finding the antiderivative, that is my big f of x. Okay? So let me get another color here. And what it's saying to do then is find the constant. So it's saying if f, where's my pencil? If f of 0 equals 0, that's saying when you plug in x equals 0, this function equals 0. So let's, let's rewrite it over here. Give me some space, f of x. So this is my antiderivative. It says when x equals 0, this function equals 0. That's what that means, all right? And so I want to solve this for c. Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. And so I get 4 plus c, or c equals negative 4. Therefore, I can plug that back in. And this is actually finding c. So my antiderivative becomes 4e to the x minus 4. And this is only if you're given this information. It'll ask you, how do you solve for the constant? And you solve for the constant. Uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. You solve for the constant by plugging in your x is 0 and setting your function equal to that value. All right, so practice these because I know it's working backwards and you got to retrain your brain. Practice, practice, practice.